Sunday, Christmas Day, three power stations in Washington state were broken into, two of them vandalized. The attacks come after at least five power substations were reportedly attacked in Washington and Oregon last month. One former regulator said he can't recall another month with as many physical threats made to the U.S. electric grid. And a recent Homeland Security bulletin warned that domestic extremists have been developing plans to disrupt the grid since at least 2020. Not only has North Carolina been attacked, but in the last uh, month, no November, there's been five or six more in North Carolina. There's been five or six additional in Florida. We know that in Washington, in Oregon, they've had recent attacks on substations there as well. So comes after authorities in North Carolina say a gunman opened fire on two Duke Energy substations last Saturday, leaving entire towns and Moore County without power. That if similar shootings happen throughout the nation at once, collectively, they could take out a large chunk of the electrical grid, leaving millions in the dark. A middle of the night assault on a California power station has one former regulator claiming it's a terrorist attack. Our way of life is a threat by well-trained and radical individuals, and most people don't even know it. The heart of our civilization, the electrical grid, is the target. Since 2020, 300 attacks have occurred, which have left 165,000 customers in the dark. The number of incidents has increased year over year since 2018. It's unknown who is behind these attacks as most go unsolved, but law enforcement believes the majority have neo-Nazi and white supremacist affiliations. And while we may just be waking up to this, law enforcement's known about it, and you know who else has known about it? Domestic terror organizations. In fact, they have been talking about it consistently for the past two years on their chat rooms and website. According to an article by Bridget Johnson, an online guide from them claims the power grid was the best target because, and I quote, it's the main thing that keeps the anti-white system going. And so long as the power turns on, the status quo, the downward decline of our race, and the increase in non-whites in our lands will carry on unhindered. The template for many of these attacks occurred on April 16, 2013, when at least two individuals coordinated a complex strike at California Electrical Substation that provides power to Silicon Valley. At 1 a.m., under cover of darkness, the assailants disabled communications at the substation and sprayed gunfire at 17 transformers. They used flashlights to communicate with each other and had set rocks to locate firing positions, signifying the area had been scouted before in. Military experts said that this all looked like a professional job. Although no customers were left in the dark because power was rerouted from other substations, $15 million in damage occurred. Compromising our power grid would devastate health, safety, public morale, and civility. By stoking chaos, they think they can undermine public trust in government and be there to replace it. What would you do if you found yourself without power? If it's just for a few hours, most of us would feel a bit inconvenienced, but it wouldn't be a big deal. But what if a worst case scenario happened and power was out for months or even years? Trust in the government would erode as hope would fade that they could restore power and provide resources to those in need. This is the scenario these radical groups want so that they can be there to fill the vacuum. You think nothing of when you turn on a light switch, but whenever you haven't had power for a few days and turn on light switch, it's, it, it means it's just everything. Disabling an opponent's power grid has been an objective of militaries for decades and is one of the reasons Russians are attacking Ukraine's electrical grid. Ukraine is desperately trying to restore electricity as temperatures drop across the country and Russia escalates its missile attack on Ukraine's energy infrastructure and power grid. Well, the attacks across Ukraine may seem like isolated incidents, but they're part of a much bigger Russian plot to freeze the country into submission. With Russia's relentless attacks on the power grid, the government says it only has half of the energy it needs. Turning the light so dim, it's been reduced to a dark patch on the globe at night, as these NASA images from space show. At least some of the attacks were carried out by well-trained individuals who may have insider knowledge of electric substations, according to those in government and law enforcement. Attacks have been both physical and cyber. Because an assailant can exploit weaknesses in the grid cybersecurity from anywhere in the world, cyber attacks may be more of a concern. This is a troubling pattern, and there's a need for more attention as the electrical grid is critical to our way of life.
the presence of so many soft targets makes the electrical infrastructure susceptible to compromise and more should be done to keep them secure. In a worst case scenario, where multiple substations are hit at once, it could lead to the blackout of large portions of the population for an extended amount of time. Let me know in the comments what you think about this story and if enough attention is being given to it. Like and subscribe to help the video spread to more people so we can get the word out. An informed public is a powerful public. Thank you.